Okay, so remember that story that we told for compound interest? Alice lends $100 to Bob at 10% interest, but then after a year she thinks, well, wait a minute, doesn't Bob owe me $110 now? And so she starts to charge Bob interest on the interest, and we get a progression that looks like this. After a while, Alice starts to get pretty good at this compound interest thing, and she starts to think a little bit more. And she starts to think, wait a minute, why am I waiting until the end of the first year? Doesn't Bob already owe me half of the interest in the middle of the year? So now Alice is thinking, in the first year, Bob starts out owing her $100. And then half of the interest, so $5 in interest, has already accumulated by the middle of the year. By the middle of the first year, Bob owes Alice $105. And so in the rest of that first year, Bob isn't just paying interest on the $100. He also has to pay interest on that $5 of interest. So 0.1 times 105 all over 2 that's 525 and so by the end of the first year so by the end of the first year Bob owes Alice 25 cents more than he did when she was just compounding the interest once a year. Let's run through one more year of this. Right at the start, Bob owes Alice 110.25. And so the interest is going to be 0.1 times. 110.25 over 2 I'm just going to leave that in my calculator in the middle of the second year I'm going to write down that Bobo is 115.76 but I'm going to leave the the entire number in my calculator and not round it so 0.1 times that number in my calculator. That's five point a long decimal. Add in that other decimal that my calculator still remembers. And by the end of the second year, Bob owes 121.55. And I'm storing those extra decimal places in my calculator because those are going to keep stacking up the interest. What's happening? Now, instead of multiplying by 1.1 each time, I'm only multiplying by 1.05. But, I'm multiplying twice as often. Right, so instead of at the end of two years, Bob owes 100 times 1.1 to the second, Bob owes 100 times 1.05 to the fourth power. Right, 100 times 1.05 to the fourth power. That's that's how I would get that decimal that I had. Okay. Alice keeps thinking. So Alice starts to think, wait a minute, doesn't he owe me part of the interest after a quarter of the year? Doesn't he owe me something after the first month? 
after the first day, the first hour? What if I compound the interest every second? And at this point, someone comes by and tells Alice to simmer down a little bit. Because at the point where compound interest is being invented, it's the Renaissance. We're doing all these calculations by hand. And there's no possible way all this interest could be worth enough money to be worth calculating what happens when we compound every second. But here's what we can do. The first thing we do is Bob says, when we make this loan, you'd better tell me how often you're doing this compounding thing. So the terms of the loan are going to include how often it's going to be compounded. How do we describe these frequencies? If we say annually, That's just one time per year. Semi-annually is twice a year. Quarterly is four times a year. Monthly, of course, is 12 times a year. Weekly is 52 times a year. And we might go as far as daily. That's 365 times a year. Leap year, you get a day off from paying interest. Now, each time we compound, we only pay part of the interest. In our semi-annual example, right, we were compounding twice a year. We only paid half the interest each time we compound. In general, we're going to take the interest rate and divide it equally among the times we compound. So we'll take our interest rate divided by the number of times we compound. We'll compound n times in one year. So that means in t years, we'll compound n times t times. This gives us a compound interest formula. The amount that we pay back at the end is, well, it's the amount we started with. And then each time we compound, we multiply by 1 plus a little piece of the interest. And we do that nt times, where p0 is the starting amount, r is the interest rate, and n is the number of times per year. And note, t is the time in years. If we're given time in something other than years, we'll have to convert it. So just as a quick example, Jamie invests $300 at 4.5% interest compounded quarterly. How much is the investment worth after seven years? We want to know the final amount. The starting amount is 300. We'll multiply that by 1 plus 4.5% is 0 0.045. Quarterly means 4 times per year. 4 times per year for 7 years is 4 times 7 times. How do we put this into our calculator? with lots of parentheses. So we'll say 300 times 1 plus, in parentheses, 0 0.045 over 4. Close these parentheses. Close these parentheses. To the power, 4 times 7, also in parentheses. Rounding to the nearest cent, we get $410.36. We're also very glad that it's not the Renaissance, and we don't have to do that calculation by hand.